Whether you're a seasoned IT professional or just starting out, one of the most important things you can do is build a lab. This is good for proving out technology, studying for certification, or just wanting to learn something new. Thankfully, it's not like the old days where I had an entire 45U rack in my office that I had to recable every time I wanted to lab something. It's a lot more flexible with software like EvenG. Depending on how much resources you give it, you could spin up a ton of virtual networking devices and lab until your heart's content. But what does it take to install it on a VM hosted on Proxmox? Let's walk through it together. Let's log into Proxmox and get this started. All right, so we're gonna create a new VM. We're going to name it Eve Lab Test. Uh, we'll just leave it Eve Lab. The OS, I already got the ISO image from uh, EveNG's website, and we're going to go with 6204. The disks, we're going to leave the system, we're going to leave the same. Disks, we're going to allocate it a 50 gig disk. The CPU, we're going to give it 16 cores. And we're going to change the type to host because we need to use some of the virtualization extensions inside of EVNG. The memory, we're going to give it 16 gigs, so 16384. The network, I'm going to just throw it onto my VM bridge too. Click next, confirm. Looks looks all good to me. Click start after created and finish. So it's down here somewhere creating. It's launched. So let's go into it and start the configuration. See if I can make this a little easier to read. There we go. So it's going through the Ubuntu startup process. And in a few minutes, it's going to prompt us in the setup screen. All right. So we're going to pick our language. We're going to do English. We're going to pick our keyboard layout, which is also going to be English. And we're going to start the installation. So it's asking me if I want to start the installation process, which is going to be destructive and it's going to wipe everything that's on the disk. Are you sure you want to continue? I do. And we're going to fast forward through this until it's done. And I'll see you on the other side. All right, we're back after a reboot. And we are not going to touch anything at this point. This is the second stage install. It's going to do a few more things for Eve and install some things that Eve needs. And you do not log in. You let it be. You let it do what it's going to do. And then when it reboots, that's when we're going to come back. If anything cool happens between now and then, I'll jump back on. But again, I'm going to fast forward through this and I'll see you when we can log in. All right, and we're back. So let's log into our server with our default password of, or sorry, our default username of root and our default password of Eve. So now we're going to enter our new root password, which in this case, going to use password. We're going to name this Eve Lab one The domain it's going to be in is the domain that's in my house, which is wasp.family. We want a statically defined IP address. So the IP address we want to use is 172.20.2.5. Make sure. Yep. Our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Our default gateway is 172.22.1, which is also our DNS server. 172.22.1. We don't have a secondary DNS server. Don't have an NTP server. Uh, proxy connection is going to be direct to the internet and it's going to do what it's going to do and it's going to reboot. So again, 
I will see you on the other side of it rebooting. And just like that, we're back. So let's log in with our password of root and our super secret password of password, which I mistyped. Try that again. Now you make passwords easy that you don't mistype them and you wind up mistyping them. So now what we need to do is we need to refresh the um, apt packages and then upgrade those apt packages. So with that, we're going to do apt update. We're root, so we don't have to use sudo to do so. And then once this does what it's going to do, we are going to do an apt upgrade which is going to upgrade all of the packages that need to be upgraded. You could also do the flag dash Y, so it'll do yes, and you don't have to interact with it. So this is gonna take a few. If anything cool happens in between now and when this is done, I'll jump back in and let you know what's going on. All right, so what this is saying is something has been modified by a script, an Etsy issue, um, and there is an updated version. So what do you wanna do? Do you wanna install the package maintainers version or do you wanna keep your current version? We're going to keep our current version and keep on going. All right, now what this is saying is there are daemons that are using outdated libraries and which ones do you want to restart? So we're gonna leave it with the default that they want us to restart. Since the system's gonna get restarted after this anyway, that really doesn't, uh, really doesn't make a difference. So we're going to reboot it and we'll be back again. All right, we're getting there. There's a lot of reboots. There's a lot of all this other cool stuff, but I'm telling you, it's gonna pay off in the end. All right, so now we're gonna log in with our password of root and our super secret password of password, and we're going to check the install to make sure that Eve is good. So dpkg-l even g. I'm gonna put the command below so we see version 6204 is running. This means we finally can log in with our username and password. So we're gonna remember the web address, 172.20.2.5. So we're gonna to go to HTTP 172.20.2.5. Cross our fingers and we have the login screen. So now here, Username and password is below. The default is admin and the password is Eve. And there we are. We are now in EveNG and we can start configuring and creating labs like there's no tomorrow. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Imagine what you can do now with labs without having to rely on hardware or having hardware in your lab. If you found this video helpful, share it with a friend or that person who still wants to hold on to that lab full of hardware that makes your electric company happy that you're still running it. Thanks for watching and catch you on the next one.